We continue our offseason look at the LA Kings with a breakdown of Kings forward Gabe Velarde. Was this his breakout year and the start of a standout career? Could his emergence lead to the Kings making a trade? We discuss on this edition of Locked On LA Kings. You are Locked On Kings, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Kings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, Kings fans, as I channel my inner Eric Cartman from the Kings videos. Uh, how are you? Welcome to Locked on LA Kings, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked on LA Kings your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. We'd love for you to leave us some positive feedback on Apple Podcasts if you would like. And uh, we're also on YouTube. Please like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content. I'm Eddie Garcia, your host of Locked on LA Kings. I've worked in sports media for the past 30 years, 20 plus years at the Fox Sports Radio Network. I'm also co-host of the Puck Podcast, a weekly NHL review show that's been putting out content for the past 16 years and a passionate LA Kings fan for 30 years. Coming up on today's show, we discuss the past season and what lays ahead for Kings forward Gabe Velarde. We have news on a possible trade involving the LA Kings. And we'll update you on the four members of the LA Kings organization participating in the World Championships as quarterfinal play got underway. But first, Gabe Velarde was the LA Kings' first round draft pick, 11th overall selection in the 2017 draft. His, um, that year, uh, it was an interesting top 10 when you look at the draft. You had some big hits, guys like Kale McCarr, Nico Heischer, Miro Heiskinen, and Elias Pedersen that have made immediate impacts on their team, but there were also some misses that were taken ahead of Gabe Velarde, like Nolan Patrick, Cody Glass, Leas Anderson, who was with the Ontario Reign last year, and Michael Rasmussen, uh, while some, including me, had not been thrilled or impressed with Gabe Velarde's career coming into this season, it is worth noting that there were a couple of players selected just before Velarde that also came into their own this past season, guys like Casey Middlestad in Buffalo and Owen Tippett in Florida. Uh, actually, I think he's in Philadelphia now. Um, they just started to show signs of life, kind of like Gabe Velarde this year. So translation is some of those high-end picks, they make immediate impacts, but some of the guys that are in that maybe 10 to 20 range of the first round of the draft, maybe it takes them an extra year or so, and it seems like maybe that was the case with Gabe Velarde. In three seasons of limited time, with the LA Kings, totaling a number of 89 games. Velarde had just 18 goals and 37 points. Again, in 89 games scattered over three seasons before this past year. This season alone, in 63 games, he had 23 goals and 41 points. It was exactly what we were all hoping for out of Velarde. Now, to be fair, there were some injury issues that affected his play and his numbers over those 89 games and parts of three seasons. And I'm sure there's still some concern about his durability going forward. We still want to see him play 75, 80 games at least. Um, but last season, I think, was a very, very positive sign for Gabe Velarde. He finished seventh on the team in points, fifth in goals scored, set new career highs in games played with 63. Those goals, 23, 13 more than his previous career high. He had 18 assists three more than his previous career high, and 41 points, 18 more than his previous career high. Clearly, it was a career year for Gabe Velarde. Six game-winning goals, by the way, tied with Adrian Kempe for the team lead of the LA Kings. So not only was his scoring up, but scoring key goals as well. Uh, his continued progress will be a huge key for the LA Kings going forward and might give the Kings some versatility to possibly upgrade in other areas of need by making a trade if they feel at this point that Velarde can fill out a top six role. We're going to talk more about that coming up. But first, let's hear from Gabe Velarde, the 23-year-old native from Kingston, Ontario. As we have with other players that we have focused on, we're going to hear what Gabe Velarde has to say from his exit interview taken the day after the Kings season ended, after that game six loss in the playoffs to the Edmonton Oilers. Now, again, I will be paraphrasing the questions and the answers in an, uh, in an effort to kind of streamline things a little bit. Um, if you want to hear the entire exit interview, you can do that. Just go to YouTube, 
Search Gabe Velarde exit interview. It'll be the first thing that pops up, courtesy of the LA Kings YouTube channel, who we thank for posting all these exit interviews for those of us who couldn't attend in person. Uh, you'll also see Gabe Velarde is sharing a microphone with Kings defenseman Sean Walker. If you go check that out, we'll focus on Sean Walker and what he had to say about his season and looking forward in a future episode. The first question for Gabe Velarde was asked if this was the first year that everyone got to see the real Gabe Velarde. And he said that maybe he was more consistent, that he was better in spurts, but he still feels like individually and as a team, he has and the team has improving to do. Uh, the next question, Gabe was asked about his expectations for himself going forward. He said that he just wants to be more consistent, um, that he has proven that he can make plays this year, but again, wants to be more consistent. Uh, Velarde was asked if he felt like this season he earned the trust and respect of head coach Todd McClellan. Uh, he said that he worked on his game defensively and that he worked on checking for his chances, which I think clearly was a quote taken from what Todd McClellan has told some of the players. Uh, and he applied that this year. Uh, and he thinks that um, that translated into more ice time. And that means that the coaches have more trust in you. I thought that really made a lot of sense because he was kind of asked, has Todd McCullen specifically spoken with you? Did he pull you aside and say you're doing the right things? And he said, not really, but the players know uh, the more expanded role that you have, the more minutes that you get, that is obviously the coaches showing more trust in you. Uh, Velarde was asked about him being a restricted free agent this offseason. He was asked if he wants a long-term contract, and he said with a grin, quote, I am not thinking about that right now, end quote. Obviously, we're going to talk a little bit more about the situation involving Gabe Velarde, but I think that little grin was probably a little bit of a nod of, of course I want a long-term deal. What kind of dumb question is that? But also, I know I had a good year, and I know I'm going to get paid a little bit more money because of it. Uh, Gabe Velarde was asked if he had a preference for where he played, seeing that he came up as a center and had played on the wing this past season. He said no, but that uh, it was good to have uh, some versatility in his game, and uh, that would allow him to be able to be able to place into the lineup in different places and translation. He's more valuable and can get more playing time because of his versatility. Uh, Velarde was asked if he was proud of the season that he had and what he was looking forward to improve on. Next year, he said he just wants to keep getting better, that he was happy compared to past years. Um, he said that dealing with injuries had been tough, uh, but he was happy that this year, um, with the way he played, he was happy and satisfied to some point. Um, but he said he was not happy with the way the season came to an end. Uh, he was asked if he wanted to improve uh, on next season in any specific areas. And he said board play. Uh, play down low. He said protecting pucks. And I thought it was interesting that he specifically talked about watching Leon Dreisaitl of the Oilers and how he protected the puck. And maybe there was something he could learn from watching him and wanted to be more like that. And that's certainly a great guy to, uh, to you know, learn something from. Uh, he's not quite as big, thick as, as Leon Dreisaitl. And, and Dreisaitl able to protect the puck because of that size that he has. But Gabe Velarde does have good size, and I think uh, I thought that was a great uh, example of somebody he can learn from and what he needs to work on going forward. Now, I talked about going into this past season when I was doing some of the offseason shows from earlier in the year that I thought that this was basically a put-up or shut-up season for Gabe Velarde. Um, now, maybe that was a little bit premature, but I thought we really needed to see something from him this season, some flashes of the you know potential that caused him to be the 11th overall pick in the draft. And thankfully, I think we absolutely saw that. Um, now, he still has some things to build on. He needs to make sure that going forward, he continues to take steps forward, no steps back. But I think the coaching staff, I think Gabe Velarde himself, Kings fans, I think we should all be very excited about his future. There is no doubt he built up a lot of confidence from this past season, and I'm sure the coaching staff has more confidence in him, his teammates as well. Uh, I expect that he could get more minutes going forward, could play a top six role, uh, continue to be uh, someone who can contribute on the power play as well. I mentioned Leon Dreisaitl on his size. Gabe Velarde 6'3 and 200 pounds. Uh, you may not realize how big he is, but he does have some very good size. And when you talk about the, the Kings forwards, they're kind of a little bit of a smaller group when you talk about Kevin Fiala and Victor Arvidsson, guys like that. 
Um, but I think for Velarde, he could use his size a little bit better, as he himself pointed out. I think that his skill and in particular his hands around the net are really what make him special. His skating ability, good enough. He's not an Adrian Kempe. He's not going to blaze his way up and down the ice. Um, but I think it's his shot and his release um, that are very, very good. Uh, he's not afraid to go to the net with that size. And he does seem like he has a pretty good nose for the puck in finding rebounds and things like that. And I think he's a pretty good passer as well. Uh, we did mention... Uh, in the exit interview that Gabe Velarde is a restricted free agent. I definitely want to touch on his contract situation uh, in just a second, but I do need to remind you that today's episode of Locked on LA Kings, your team every day, is brought to you by Bird Dogs. What's that? Well, uh, it's simply put, shorts that have underwear built in them. Now, Bird Dogs might sound a little weird, but I ask you, is comfort weird? Because these shorts are unbelievably comfortable and they look good lots of different colors to choose from and how often does something look good and feel good too it is the perfect combination i wear my bird dogs to our weekly visits on friday to disneyland i'll be doing that coming up tomorrow and uh, i will look good and feel good walking around the happiest place on earth and uh, my wife enjoys it too because i don't i don't look good that often to be quite i'm not fashion forward like she is uh, so why not wear something that looks good and feels good? Go to birddogs.com slash locked on NHL. And when you enter the promo code locked on NHL, uh, they'll throw in a free custom bird dog Yeti style tumbler with every order, which is nice of them. Again, that is birddogs.com, B A R D D O G S.com. Enter the promo code locked on NHL for your free gift. We continue our discussion of LA Kings forward Gabe Velarde. And uh, if you, you may or may not know if you're someone that pays attention to contract statuses and things like that, um, that Gabe Velarde is a restricted free agent along with Rasmus Kupari, Jared Anderson Dolan, and Zach McHugh. And those are the only players the Kings don't have under contract for next season. Now, Velarde does have arbitration rights meaning that while he is under contract and, and, and or I should, I should say he is under team control as a restricted free agent, obviously an unrestricted free agent means you sign wherever you want, but as a restricted free agent, you are still under team control until they decide they don't want you anymore, so to speak. The Kings obviously still want Gabe Velarde. They're going to offer him a contract, and basically he has to just accept whatever they get him, give him, except uh, that he has arbitration rights. So what does that mean? That means that Gabe Velarde's representatives uh, make a contract offer to the Kings. The Kings make a contract offer to him. The two sides either come to a deal. If they don't, then there is the option for Gabe Velarde to have an arp arbitrator decide who gets, uh, who, who the, he's, what he's going to get paid. Is it going to be what he's asking for, or is it going to be what the team has said they are willing to give him? Uh, it is very likely considering the numbers that Gabe Velarde put up this year and the improvement that he had, that he is going to get a raise. And I have no doubt the Kings are going to offer him a raise. He, If you recall, he signed a one-year contract as a restricted free agent this past season when he didn't have arbitration rights, uh, and he got paid $825,000 for this past season. So uh, he is going to get a raise, I have no doubt. Uh, they would prefer it be you know, what the team offers him, but again, he does have the option if he doesn't like that to offer that he can go to arbitration and it could be more. It could be what the Kings offer. Uh, we'll see. Um, now, it, it is rare in these situations, very rare that it ever goes to arbitration. If you look across the league every year, the teams and players almost always come to an agreement like right before the arbitration is going to be heard by the arbitrator. So. Uh, I don't expect this to be anything contentious. I think Gabe Velarde's representatives understand he is deserving of a raise, but at the same time, he had one really good year, and to get a long-term deal, you got to show more than that. So I am anticipating that Gabe Velarde will do something similar to what Mikey Anderson did, similar but not the same. If you recall, Mikey Anderson was a restricted free agent. He signed a one-year $1 million deal to play for the Kings this past season with the understanding that he would get offered a bigger deal going forward, which is what happened. He agreed to an eight-year, $33 million deal that kicks in this coming season. Now, I, I don't anticipate quite that for Gabe Velarde. I think there could be a bridge deal, which is what they call this, 
Um, but I still think the Kings want to see more. They, the Kings knew Mikey Anderson was reliable, a guy they could depend on who was going to play a lot of games, eat up a lot of minutes. And he had proven himself that he was worthy of an investment. Gabe Velarde hasn't done that quite yet. He has scratched the surface. He has showed some encouraging signs, but I think they still want to see another season like he had this past season, at least, if not better, before they decide to invest in him long-term. And that, frankly, only makes sense. And I'm sure that Gabe Velarde's agent and he understand that that is a reasonable expectation as well. According to capfriendly.com, the Kings have about $7.587 million in projected cap space, 18 players under contract. So again, I think the Kings looking to see more from Gabe Velarde. He's going to get a raise for next season. How much of a raise he gets uh, will be, be determined, hopefully not through the arbitration process, um, but we shall see. And I think, again, I think the Kings want to see uh, a little bit more durability out of him. Obviously, he was he was injured late in the year and missed some playoff time. But if he could play a full 82, put up numbers a little bit better than he did this past season, I think the Kings will be like, okay, this is a guy we want to invest in. He's young. He's got skill. He's got good size. And he'll see some, some dollar signs uh, going forward for sure. That said, does the future of Gabe Velarde, if you believe in him, if you believe what we saw this past season was what we're going to see going forward, does that mean the Kings might make a move because of that? Uh, we are going to get into that in just a second, but I want to remind you as well that today's episode of Locked on LA Kings is also brought to you by our friends at eBay Motors. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is the perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors with eBay's guaranteed fit. You can be sure that Every part you get fits right. The first time around, just add your ride to the My Garage and look for the green check to know that the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game. And when you shop at eBay Motors with 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. So uh, I want to thank our guy, Jim in Lakewood for uh, passing this along to me. Um, there was an interesting um, conversation, I guess, uh, on a podcast. Um, and of course, this is, you know, this is being the off season. Uh, and if you listen to, uh, you know, our past shows this week uh, of Locked on LA Kings, you everydayers already know this, but I had five questions for the LA Kings this offseason in our episode this past Tuesday. The number one question was, would the Kings pull off a trade or trades this offseason? Well, uh, that was a talking point on a respected podcast recently. And again, thanks to Jim and Lakewood for giving me the heads up on this. Um, two of the more respected hockey talkers out there, Elliot Friedman and Jeff Merrick, have a uh, podcast called 32 Thoughts. Uh, this is from May the 19th, and they discussed the LA Kings could make a trade involving forward Victor Arvidsson. Now, as my friend Ben Maller of the Ben Maller Show Overnights on the Fox Sports Radio Network likes to say, could is a weasel word because it can apply to just about anything. I could be the GM of the LA Kings. Doesn't mean it's going to happen. Still, uh, like I said, these two guys are pretty respected NHL reporters, and they usually don't just throw things out there. Doesn't mean they're right all the time, um, but let's talk about this. Uh, Victor Arvidsson is 30 years old. He has a year remaining on his contract at a very respectable 4.25 million. He's coming off a season where he was fourth on the team in points with 59, third in goals with 26, and fifth in assists with 33. All in all, a very solid season for Victor Arvidsson coming off back surgery. Now, he does not have a no trade clause, and he is a top six forward that many teams around the league could definitely use. But why would the Kings want to trade a productive top six forward? Well, the speculation is, and I'm, like, I'm guessing it's pretty obvious to you if you pay attention to such things, they are the Kings are looking to possibly free up some cap space and sign a player in a position of need. Now, I believe that that would mean looking to re-sign defensemen Vladislav Gavrikov. Now, you'd be subtracting from the team that we saw at the end of the year to add to them, but 
you already know what you're getting in Gavrikov. He fit in very well. Uh, he liked LA. A full season of Vladislav Gavrikov on the blue line on that second pairing with Matt Roy should help the team overall defensively and on the penalty kill. Bottom line is, would you rather have Victor Arvidsson next season or Vladislav Gavrikov? That's a tough question because they're both really valuable. They're both really good. But what do the Kings need more? Do they need the offense of Arvidsson or do they need the defense of Gavrikov? I think the answer is, and I love Victor Arvidsson, I think the answer is Gavrikov. Now, it doesn't mean they're going to make this trade. Uh, it is something that it is the belief of these two respected NHL reporters that is something is being discussed. It makes a lot of sense. Um, and look, Victor Arvidsson has a lot of things that are attractive. He's a very solid passer. He has a great scoring touch. Now, he is a bit undersized, but he's a pretty courageous guy. He will take on defenders. He's got good speed, not afraid to go to the net. However, I do think if you're asking me if I have a choice of one or the other, I think the need for the Kings is more on the blue line. And this could theoretically open up a spot in the top six for Gabe Velarde, who we've been talking about. Now, he's not as good of a skater as Arvidsson, but uh, he can't really create his own shot like Arvidsson, but he is bigger and he is a better scorer around the net. Um, so do the Kings believe Gabe Velarde is ready for a bigger role? And could he fill Victor Arvidsson's skates? I think it's worth a shot. I I would be willing to roll the dice that this is a decent gamble, if you want to call it that. Now, maybe that also opens up other spots for a guy like an Arthur Kaliev in the bottom six as well. Uh, maybe some more consistent minutes from him helps his play as well. We talked about Kevin Fiala needs to be in the top six. Uh, you know what what they're investing in him, his skill set, him on the third line. It's what worked this past season, but he needs to be probably on that top line with Andre Kopitar and Adrian Kempe. And then you could have a second line of Philip Deneau, Trevor Moore, and Gabe Velarde. It's not a bad second line if Velarde continues to progress the way he has, and the defense would be better. Definitely something to consider, something to think about. I would not be shocked if it happens. Again, I really like Victor Arvidsson. He's a fun player. Uh, he, he's you know a productive player. But you know when you're in the situation the Kings are in, some hard decisions have to be made. So the question is, what do you think the Kings are thinking, and what are you thinking? Do you believe the Kings for a full season next year would be a better team with Vladislav Gavrikov for 82 games based on what you saw out of him this year? or Victor Arvidsson for 82 games? It's a tough question. I don't think there's an easy answer. I don't think there's also a bad answer, frankly. I think if the Kings keep Victor Arvidsson, that's not a bad option. But if they decide to move off of him, uh, make a trade, get some more cap room, and be able to sign a Vladislav Gavrikov, that's a pretty good situation as well. So uh, guess what? We've got a fan feedback show coming up tomorrow. I'd love to get your thoughts on this with an email or in the comments below if you're watching on YouTube. But uh, yeah, it is a, it was an interesting topic brought up by those guys, Elliot Friedman and Jeff Merrick. Again, they are respected hockey uh, reporters. Maybe they were just throwing a, a rumor out there, or maybe it makes a lot of sense, or maybe both. But uh, yeah, that was something that caught my eye. Thanks to Jim and Lakewood for passing it along. And uh, it is some, some food for thought, for sure. Uh, we do have an update on the members of the LA Kings organization playing in the World Championships. Uh, and it was an eventful day at the World Championships. If you paid attention, two of the four players for the LA Kings that have qualified for the quarterfinals are moving on, and two of them are going home. And is it bad that I'm actually happy one of them is Kevin Fiala, that he's done? No more hockey for him. Switzerland lost to Germany 3-1. to one. Kevin Fiala did have an assist in the loss. He finished with a goal and five assists, joining the team in progress in the tournament. Um, look, I'm happy for him. He, uh, he got to go play some more hockey, represent his country. It was something he was passionate about. From all accounts, he did not get hurt, did not aggravate any injury issues he had late in the year. So we can all exhale that to Kevin Viola went and played, and it looks like he, he got through it just fine. He did look good in the limited uh, time that I saw him play in, in the tournament. So good sign for him going forward. But Kevin Viola, no more hockey for him uh, until training camp next season. Also, the tournament is over for Kings forward Carl Grundstrom. Sweden was shocked by Latvia in uh, you know the, the the big Cinderella team of the tournament so far. They are playing 
the games in Latvia and in Finland. And so Latvia is on home ice. They've got the crowd behind them, and, and they've been inspired to make it into the semifinals with a 3-1 upset of Sweden. Uh, for Carl Grundstrom, he had no points in that loss against Latvia. He finished with a modest one goal and one assist in eight games playing for Sweden. The U.S. has advanced into the semifinals. They shut out Czechia 3-0. As expected, Kings and Rain goaltender Cal Peters did not start in this game in the middle round. He is not expected to play the rest of the tournament unless something happens to number one goalie Casey DeSmith. For what it's worth, against lesser competition, Cal's numbers are good at the World Championships, a 3-0 record and a 956 save percentage. And Ontario Reign captain TJ Tynan continues to rack up the points. He had an assist in that win over Czechia. He now has one goal and 10 assists for 11 points in the tournament, still tied for second in scoring in the entire tournament. Still no update on Reign forward Martin Kromiak, who we believe suffered an injury uh, in the World Championships playing for Slovakia. Hopefully, though, it was a minor injury and he'll be ready to go for the start of training camp. If you're interested, the semifinals are set for Saturday, U.S. versus Germany and Canada versus Latvia. All right, you everydayers, those of you that listen and watch every day, time for another Kings fan feedback show on Friday. Your chance to chime in on everything we've talked about over the past week or anything that's on your mind. Uh, what do you think about the season that Gabe Velarde has had? Are you optimistic about his future? We also talked about Philip Deneau earlier in the week. Are you confident about him being our second line center now and in the future? We had five offseason questions for the LA Kings. Did you agree with my five things or are there other things? Um, we had an interview with longtime LA sports reporter Ted Sobel. Talked about the Kings over the years. You can comment on anything he had to say as well. The email address is LockedOnEddie at gmail.com. E-D-D-I-E, LockedOnEddie at gmail.com. You can always leave your comments as well on anything we've talked about in the YouTube episode comment section below get those emails in as soon as possible for friday's big show also would love for you to stay interactive with us uh, on twitter and instagram we are at locked on la kings in both of those places i am eddie garcia thank you as always for listening and watching this episode of locked on la kings part of the locked on podcast network have a great day we will talk to you tomorrow and as always go kings go <laughs>